Welcome to the Nomenclature Workshop. Let's take you through some examples of how to do nomenclature or naming. One of the most important aspects of naming is that each compound has a different name than every other compound. And we're going to be focusing today on what are called the IUPAC names. And uh, <laughs> I wrote that down in my first take. IUPAC stands for International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists. They are the people who chooses the names and sets the naming system for compounds, new compounds, anything that comes around. So uh, we're going to be learning IUPAC names, which are like the standard names, uh, though there are a few common names that you are required to know for this class. Uh, handy things to have right now are a periodic table, which uh, I always have with me, and uh, my nomenclature list for this course. Uh, specifically turns to the ion page right now because we're going to start naming ionic compounds. And ionic compounds consist of a positive ion, a cation, uh, oftentimes a metal such as sodium, uh, but also the polyatomic ion ammonium can be a cation, and the negative an ion or the anion. And the there are a number of ways to name these. But the first method is ionic, sorry, another types of comp, types of ways, but they're all pretty similar. We're going to look at case one, which is ionic compounds with a fixed charge metal plus a nonmetal. And uh, the name of that is just going to be the name of the cation plus the name, uh, base name of the anion plus IDE. As an example, we've got potassium ion right here and chloride ion right here. And... These are what I like to call uh, monatomic ions, meaning mono one atomic atom, one atom ions. And as we've talked about in the lecture outlines, uh, if you look at your periodic table, there are trends in the charges of the monatomic ions. All of the ions in group one are plus one. All of the ions are in group two are plus two. And uh, the noble gases form no ions. The halogens form minus one ions. So that would be F minus Cl minus. Oxygen, sulfur, and selenium, uh, when they form ions, form two minus ions. And nitrogen and phosphorus uh, form negative three. And I guess I forgot my aluminum right here. Aluminum forms a plus three. And the other ones, we don't have to know. So that's how having a periodic table helps you know the charges of what are called uh, the representative elements or the main group elements. Those are the ones that are taller here and not the transition metals. Okay. So, uh, for example, um, let's write the formulas for the following cations. Barium, I look for barium on my periodic table. Barium's in group two. That means it's going to be two plus. So I write the chemical symbol. Then I write two plus. Two plus is more standard, but if you write plus two, that's fine as well. Aluminum ion, I already called that out as 3 plus, and you can tell that from its location. And potassium ion, well, if you know the potassium is one of those that has a different letter than its spelling, then that's K. K is potassium. It's in group 1, and it has a plus 1 charge. So we get K plus there. So those are the formulas for these cations. Uh, formulas for the following anions. Bromide, well, we're going to look for bromine. Bromine is in the halogens column and group, and these are the minus one ions. So I'm going to write the chemical symbol and a minus. Nitride, nitride is nitrogen. It's in this group here, and those are the minus three ones. And three minus, or minus three again. And oxygen is O2 minus, because it's in that second column uh, next to the halogens there. 
Now let's do some practice naming the actual compounds. And again, the naming for these based on monatomic ions are going to be just name of the uh, cation plus name of the anion, no number prefixes. And so no number prefixes. And there'll be no number prefixes for all of the ionic compounds. We'll get to number prefixes when we talk about molecular compounds in a bit. So Na is sodium. And F is fluorine, that's the name of the atom. Fluoride, the I-D-E ending. Uh, becomes sodium fluoride there. And make sure that the U comes before the O. It's like fluorine or fluoride has the flu. That's how I remember how to spell it. All right, SR. Well, uh, SR, if I look for it on my periodic table, it's again in this group two, which means it has a two plus charge. And I minus I is iodine and iodine is in the halogens row so it's going to be minus and you can see that it takes two iodines to uh, cancel out or uh, balance the charge of one strontium so this is going to be strontium iodide um, here Mg is magnesium. And S is sulfur, but then the ion is called sulfide. And finally here in this example, we have calcium nitride, uh, calcium Ca, um, and nitride. And for calcium nitride, just remember, so uh, all of the anions that we're dealing with so far are going to be non-metals, and non-metals are gonna be this area of the periodic table up here, uh, and they're gonna be uh, IDE endings for all of them. Now, uh, working this backwards, so meaning that we have the name now and we're trying to get the formula, I like to take this in a couple steps uh, potassium, which is already up here, that's going to be K plus. And phosphide is going to come from phosphorus. So I like to find it on my periodic table. Phosphorus, it's in the group that has the minus three charges. Okay. So that's going to be P3 minus. And when you give the formula, just like you, we noted in this strontium iodide, so you need all of the charges to exactly balance or exactly cancel out. We've talked about this before um, in the lecture outlines. So this is gonna be, oh, and there's two ways to do it. So there's the way where you bring down the charges and that's a good way to do it. Uh, as long as you're thinking about making sure that there's no charge on the ionic compound, so let's see. K3P will be uh, the formula for that. And I did, you can just bring them down. Barium fluoride, so barium is gonna be in this second column here. So it's gonna be plus two, barium two plus. Fluoride minus, bring them down or crisscross them if you will. And the formula for barium fluoride is BAF2. And this is going to be important. We're going to use this a lot. That's, uh, and the more nomenclature you know, the more helpful it is for this and all your chemistry courses. And if you're going to be taking Chem 400, uh, many of the Chem 400 classes have a nomenclature quiz in the first couple weeks because this is something we're learning in this class. Calcium iodide. Uh, let's do... oh. Calcium is going to be 2 plus. It's in that second one. Uh, oh, I shouldn't write that there. Calcium 2 plus. 
iodide minus, crisscross them, like so. And magnesium nitride, magnesium is Mg. It's in my second column, so it's a two plus. Nitride is in the column that has three minus. Cross them over, Mg3 and two. So that's uh, from formula to name and name to formula, how to do these. Now let's look at some examples with metals with multiple charges. And these are going to be from the part of the periodic table called the transition metals. And this happens a lot for the transition metals. And we don't have to know all of the ions possible. There are a lot more than we will be doing. You have to memorize the ones that are on the ion nomenclature list. And some examples, you can look for the Roman numerals here. It's going to be uh, mercury 1 and mercury 2, copper, uh, copper 2, hold on, copper 1's up here. Um, oh yeah, because these are all the plus 2 charges, plus 1's and plus 3's. So not so many of them, but they do tend to show up on uh, quizzes so uh, and on the homework for sure. So let's go ahead and um, look at some of the examples that we have here. So for example, if you're given the formula, oh, so the modern system, which is the only one we're going to do, that's the IUPAC system. There is an older naming system, but we're not going to do that for now. Let's just learn one system for now. Uh, and if you have any questions, please ask about the other system. So name of cation metal plus Roman numeral in parentheses and plus base name of anion. So the wrinkle here is we're going to be having, um, so since iron has iron three, iron three right here and iron two right there, we need a way of telling them apart in their names. And the system that IUPAC came up with is Roman numerals. And you can see, uh, I think I've caught all of them and uh, that I have not left a space between the name of the metal and the charge there because it is the charge that is in parentheses. Um, you can leave a space, but just because our online homework system, uh, the answers don't leave a space, so I'm just doing them all to try and be consistent. So if you were to put this into the online homework system, then you would do uh, iron no space between the uh, to the parentheses. Either way is fine um, if you do it uh, out in the real world, whatever that is, outside of this class anyway. Okay, so, um, ah, and this is a good point right here. So this must be iron three because we know that chloride is minus and it takes three chlorides to balance one iron. That iron must be plus three to balance out. So, um, and here are some other ones. So, uh, tin could be tin 2 or tin 4. Uh, it's tin 4 because there are two oxygens there, and each oxygen is an oxide ion with 2 times 2 is minus 4. Here's copper. We know phosphide uh, is 3 minus. To balance them, we need three copper ones. Let's work through some more examples together here. So uh, this is going to be uh, SNCl2. Now SNCl2 chlorine is minus one. And uh, whether you've made flashcards or you look, you've memorized how to do it according to the periodic table, chlorine is minus one. Since there are two of them for one tin, that tin must be plus two. And now we know that tin, since tin can be plus four. Oh, actually, tin is a tricky one. Tin is all the way outside of the transition metals, but um, anything, un well, we know that anything to the left of the um, 
zigzag line here in the metalloids is a metal. I guess these are not transition metals, but they still have two choices. Um, so lead has two choices as well. Lead and tin being the two uh, big ones down here, plus two and plus four, each of them. I'm looking at the list, and I actually don't see tin on my list, but I do see, oh, there's tin too. Oh, but I don't have any four ions on there, plus four. Um, well, <laughs> perhaps that should change. Uh, I don't know where my plus fours went. But we have tin uh, two, and we have tin, um, sorry, we have lead two as well. And there are other options. So this is going to be tin. Two, Roman numeral in parentheses, chloride. Then we go to, here's iron. Notice that there are three bromines. Bromine is a halogen. Sorry, three bromides. That means there's going to be a Br minus. And three of them, so this is going to be iron. Three. Uh, bromide. And uh, this one here uh, is very similar to copper, uh, phos copper one phosphide up here, since nitrogen and phosphorus are in the same column. So this is going to be copper one nitride. Now, let's do it the opposite way. What's nice if you have the name is that you know the charge on the ion. So this is going to be Cr3 plus. And oxide, well, if you've memorized it, great. Oxide is in the minus two row. Two minus. And then crisscross your charges uh, to become the subscripts. Two, oh, three. Iron 2 iodide. We have iron 2 plus and iodide minus. Crisscross things. Tin 2 fluoride. I know, it's so nice having the charges and then putting them together that way. 2 plus. F minus. But you can see that if you don't know your ionic charges for the fluorine, um, and the uh, nitride and things like that, this could be daunting, to say the least. So we just take this, you know, one by one. Take your time. Uh, zinc nitride. Aha, zinc. Zinc is one of the transition metals, that's for sure. Here's zinc. Uh, but it only has one option. And so it is just Zn. It has no, oh, it has no Roman numeral. Yes, <laughs> uh, but it is a two plus, And that's something that uh, we're just going to have to memorize. And then nitride is three minus. Sorry, uh, of course, there's no Roman numeral there. So that means there is no Roman numeral. Uh, let's see, so switch partners, Zn3 and two there we go and that's our second kind let's take a pause there